I'm observing the moon on the comfort of a table and a chair, sitting on a chair. With a tracking a small tabletop telescope. This is the Mead ETX90, I think it's RC or CA or something like that. This is the old version. The mount is the old version. The tube is a new version, I think. I just married them together. And I'm looking at the moon with the tracking on and the Teleview and Optic 24mm. It's such a comfortable setup and tracking. Oh, I never had such a joy sitting somewhere after a hard day's work, just listening to my favorite music or podcast and observing the moon. Let's look at the moon now. As you can see, it's tracking, tracking the moon. This is the closest thing that I've experienced to, to a Questor. I have used a Questor when I was very younger in outer school. And uh, I have now a Questor field version, but not the one that has a, uh, you know, clock drive and this one has a clock drive it's not a go-to but it's perfect for planetary or the targets that you can actually follow you find it and then it follows it And the accuracy of the tracking is depending on the direction to the polar star. And so I have just roughly aligned it to the polar star, Polaris, because it's not daylight practically. And uh, it doing it acceptable. I can hold the camera without much, you know, drifting against the eyepiece. Uh, if I could see the Polaris, probably that would be different. And I'm also holding the telescope. This telescope is placed on a very wobbly picnic table, one of these folding ones. And that was the view to the CX90 tracking one, not go to one. I love this tracking one. You don't need to, you can do it in the daylight, you can use it in daylight. So clever, simple and clever. And that's the moon I was looking at. Just uh, probably one or two days to the first quarter. I'm now using the Skywatcher Nirvana, one of the most comfortable eyepieces I ever have seen. This is a 16 millimeter one. The 16 millimeter one, which is a eight, has an 82 degrees field of view. I'm really pleased with the amount of the details I can see. My hand uh, cannot hold it. The camera against the eyepiece very good. The view through visually is much more clear and visible and enjoyable, delightful. And it's, a, it's quite cold actually, my hand is also holding this against it. You can see a slight drift, that's because the polar alignment is not accurate. 
and roughly pointed it toward the polaris and this is the view that you could i was watching to this uh, eyepiece one of my best comfortable eyepieces i've not seen an 82 degree eyepiece so comfortable i mean i have nagler ones nagler ones are really difficult to use they have such a tight eye relief and when I used the first time this Nirvana, Skywatcher Nirvana 16 degrees suddenly the muscles around my eye relieved it was so comfortable um, structurally, I mean it, it, from the point of view of a structured geology Taurus Litro is very interesting and uh, but there are more interesting things if you just want to consider pure geology, not just the uh, structural geology. And uh, like the um, Apollo 18 uh, landing site that, anyway, it didn't land there, that was in the Aristarchus Plateau. Okay, I found the source of the error in tracking, actually. Now I found the source of the tracking error. Uh, the correct position is this hole, but by mistake I put it in this hole. So, now it is tracking perfect. So this is the hole that you have to put it, at least for me, if I'm in the UK. For other locations it may vary. I have a video which shows that what the... For different locations there's a document a very rare document i found it after searching a lot and you can use that